to 15. All right, so we are on chapter 14 of rules. Um, and chapter 14 is no fish in the fish, no toys in the fish tank. Okay. Um, Monday morning, my heart jumps to see the minivan in the driveway next door. I get dressed and eat my breakfast in little bites. So if Christy calls, I won't answer with a mouth full of cereal. At nine o'clock, the phone rings. I'll get it, I yell, in the direction of the kitchen where mom and David are still eating breakfast. Please don't let it be one of mom's clients or dad calling from work. I wait two more rings so it won't seem like I was waiting next to the phone. Hello? Hi, Catherine, it's Christy. I mouth, yes, to keep from squealing. Hi. I was wondering if you'd like to do something. I don't have to be at the community center until noon. Sure, that'd be great. Could we hang out at your house? Mine is crazy today, Christy says. Mom forgot to tell me that the plumber was coming and now I can't even shower. I'd like to say you can shower at my house to, to be nice, but with David home, the embarrassment chances are way too risky. Wanna go swimming? I ask instead. There's a pool? It's a pond, but it's not far. There's a raft and a little beach that anyone can use. She hesitates so long, I ask. Are you still there? I'll be over in a few minutes. In my bedroom, I tug open the top drawer of my bureau to pick out a bathing suit. The blue one piece is good for swimming, but it's not pretty. I love the purple and white bikini that looks like a, like, baddock. But the top slides when I dive. So I'm left with the last suit, green with gold flowers, swimmable and not ugly. Though I'm hurrying, I take a couple of seconds to stroke on cherry lip gloss and pink eyeshadow and comb my hair. Maybe I'll try my hair loose today, parted on the side. With jean shorts over my bathing suit, my favorite beach towel dropped around my neck, sunscreen lathered and, and flip-flops on, I'm ready. Mom's still in the kitchen with David, kneeling beside a pile of wet paper towels. She's cleaning a milk puddle from the linoleum. At the table, David's swinging his legs and eating his cereal. Christy and I are going to the pond, I say. I'll be back um, by lunch. Mom looks up from the spilled milk. I'm heading to the store. Would you like me to drop you girls off on the way? No thanks, we'll walk. She gathers the wet paper towels. David, when you're finished, get your shoes on. We need to go to the grocery store and buy something for lunch. He looks up from his bowl of cereal at the table, milk clinging to his chin. End of video? Okay, but just this time. David bolts up from his seat, pushing past me to drop his bowl in the sink. Watch out, frog! He cries, bits of cereal splashing all over the counter. Say excuse me, Catherine. When he doesn't say it, Mom gets up to block the doorway. Excuse me, Catherine, she repeats looking over her glasses at David. The doorbell rings. See you later. I squeeze past David and under Marm's arm. Through my, my name's part of the conversation, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with me. I race down the hallway to the front door, but as soon as I see Christy, I wish I picked up the purple and white bikini. She looks pretty in a long t-shirt and sandals her hair hanging over her shoulder in a single braid. Can I borrow a beach towel? She asks. I couldn't find mine. Sure, I'll go grab one. When I come back to the living room with my second favorite beach towel, Christy giggles. There's a duck in your fish tank. Behind her, the aquarium covers just, I'm sorry. Behind her, the aquarium cover juts out at a crooked angle. In the tank, David's rubber duck is bobbing on the surface and a goldfish mouthing at its tail. Come on, 
I fake a smile, handing her the towel. Let's go. Outside, the air smells summery, of mown grass and warm tar, and from somewhere high in the trees, I hear a woodpecker rapping. David is gone with mom, and I'm free, walking down the road with Christy. I've never been swimming in a pond, Christy says, only in pools in the ocean. It's fun. I make sure to keep in step with Christy. Much warmer than the ocean, at least in Maine. It's gooey at the bottom when you're out a ways, but that's only pine needles and leaves. Once you get in, you probably won't even notice a big difference from a pool. She doesn't look so sure. Approaching the corner, I can't believe how ordinary the bus stop looks in the summer. Only another bend of sidewalk. Christy slows, staring at Ryan's empty yard. Was I her second choice today? Are there fish in there? Christy asks, kicking her sandals off into the sand. I follow her gaze across the pond to the um, fringe of pine and white birch trees on the other shore. Only minnows come near the shore. On our side of the pond, there's a strip of sandy beach, but the far side has a steep scooped out bank, tangled with bushes and roots of trees. Once, I overheard Ryan tell someone that there's big fish that live under that raft, I say, still smarting from Christie's long look at his house. But I've never seen it, so he's probably lying. Christy wraps her fingers around her braid. Is it deep? Over my head, but not so deep that I can't swim down and touch. Sometimes we dare each other to bring up muck from the bottom. Her night knuckles whiten on the braid. But we don't have to do that, I say. Good. She walks to the shore, pulling off her t-shirt, seeing her candy red bikini. I wish again that I had worn my purple and white one, even if I had to hold the top when I dove in. I undo my shorts. I like your bathing suit. Ugh, I wanted to wear the one that my aunt gave me, but I think it's in the laundry at my dad's house. Christy points her foot, skimming the water with her toes. Standing in the pond, my ankles look crooked, cut off by the water's surface. I study the water line's ripple of distortion, wanting to capture it in my sketchbook. That's the bad part of living in two places, Christy shudders, stepping into the pond with me. I never have what I need at the right house, and mom doesn't get it. This morning, she just kept saying, wear another bathing suit, like it didn't matter. Watching her address the straps of her bikini top, I want to tell her that I know how it feels to be split down the middle too. Pulled between the regular world of school and friends and David's world where none of the same things matter and how I don't belong completely in either world. But here's one of my rules. When someone is upset, it's not a good time to bring up your own problems. Christy takes a step farther into the water. I hate this bathing suit. The straps are always falling down. I'm in the water all the way to my knees now. I know what you mean. The top of my favorite bikini doesn't fit perfect and it slides. It never shows anything, but Christy smiles. I had a bathing suit like that once. It drove me crazy. Stepping deeper, the cold tingles my thighs. I rub those goosebumps on my arms. It's always chilly at first, but you get used to it, I promise. Catherine, I'm sorry about the other day with the gum. I turn, but she's not looking at me. Her chin is down and Christy skims her fingers across the surface of the water. David doesn't get jokes sometimes. The water feels warmer on my legs and I take another step. Ryan didn't mean to upset him, he told me. He didn't mean to upset you. The tiny waves um, created from Christy's hand moving the water make a freezing tickle on my stomach. He said, the bottom gets gooey here, I say to change the subject. If you dive in now, you don't have to feel it. Plunging forward, my chest and shoulders scream with the shock of cold. 
I go under, breath stroking, kicking hard until my lungs ache and I can't stay under one more second. Breaking the surface, my hair is plastered to my face. I tread water, pushing it away. Christy stands in the shallows, her hands tracing across the pond surface. Come on, I say. It's not bad once you get in. She takes a step. Are you kidding? It's freezing. Not once you get used to it. I'll meet you at the raft. I love swimming in water over my head. Cold emptiness under my feet. Those sudden warm spots or icy underwater springs. Almost to the raft, I flip. Almost to the raft, I flip to my back and give in to the lightness of floating. Held by the water, I watch the blue sky waiting for Christy to catch up. This is what I wished for. A next door friend I could just come and go with. She's out of breath when she finally reaches me. At the ladder, I grip the sides and I swing my feet to the bottom rung. Water show showers off of me as I climb. What about the big fish? Christy says, swimming closer. What kind is it? The air makes me shiver. I sit on the raft and wrap my arms around my knees. It's probably just an eel. Her eyes widen. I mean, it's probably not an eel. Just a fish that looks like an eel. Christy scrambles up the ladder. Yuck! I tuck my soaked hair behind my ears, wishing I had brought my hairband. I know without asking that Christy won't want to touch the bottom. She doesn't seem to like the top of the water much. Never mind the bottom. Maybe we can stay and lay out in the sun? We lie on our stomachs and peek between the slats to the darkness below. The slight rocking of the raft, the slosh of the little waves slapping, slapping the boards beneath, and the sun drying my back makes me yawn. I have to find my other suit. I look over to see Christy fixing her shoulder straps. But if it's not at dad's, I don't know where it is. She lays her chin on her arm. I wish mom wouldn't give up so easily. It's not like he had an affair or something. Maybe they're just taking a break for a while. Maybe, Christy sighs. <sighs> Do you think there really is a fish down there? The sadness in her voice makes me want to give her something, even if it's only pretend. What if he is down there, I say, but he's magic like that fairy tale, the fisherman and his wife. Christy squeezes the end of her braids and drops the water falling off the tip, beating down the raft. I don't know that story. This guy catches a big fish, except the fish says he's a really a prince under a spell. The man lets the fish go, but his wife sends him back to get a wish granted. I'd scream if a fish started talking to me. Me too. But what would you wish for? I'd wish for my par I wish that my parents would get back together and be happy. She turns to me. Her eyes look worried. Do you think that's two wishes or one? One. Your turn. What would you wish for? I look down between the raft boards and imagine my always fish, my fingers reaching through the perfect top of David's head, finding the broken places in his brain. Turning knobs or flipping switches, all his autism wiped clean. But saying that wish brings trouble. All people have a place, my third grade teacher said firmly when I drew a pretend older brother in the my family picture to be put out in the hallway for open house. I tried to tell her it was still David, but I wanted him to be able to play with me. And since I was fixing things, I made him older so that he could stick up for me. But I had to draw the picture over and visit the guidance counselor instead of going to music. Why is it in fairy tales, wishes always backfire? I ask. Here's another rule. If you want to change the subject, confuse the other person by going off on a wild, chatty detour. Like in The Fisherman and His Wife, I continue. The fisherman's wife keeps wanting bigger things, and by the end of the story, hey, 
a voice calls, Chris! I sit up so quick that I scrape my knees on the raft. Ryan waves, standing on the sand at the shore. Behind him, his bike rests, propped against the tree. Christy waves back, hi! I hope she yells at him to go home, but she says, come on, Catherine, and does a running dive, heading for sure, for the shore. I let her swim ahead of me. I do the breaststroke, dipping my face in and out of the water so I don't have to see Ryan standing on the sand waiting for us. At the shore, I cross my arms over my stomach and walk to, the sh to my shorts and towel. Your mom said you were here, Ryan says to Christy. Did you ask Catherine yet? Ask me, Christy smiles. Catherine, you know how the community center is holding a dance on Saturday? I nod. They asked me to help decorate, Christy says. And I was hoping I could help you decorate, I say, grabbing my towel off the sand. I'm good at making posters. Actually, I was hoping you'd like to go. Christy glances at Ryan. Me and Ryan and you and somebody. It'll be so much fun. Please say yes. I wrap my towel around me as tight as I can. I don't know anyone to ask. Ask Jason. Christy says, that boy you drew, this is your chance to ask him out. I open my mouth, but Ryan's smirk makes me close it. But that's not the only reason I don't tell. I don't dance. I slide my feet into my, slip, my flip flops. I'll teach you, Christy says. My dad works late a lot, so I don't think that I could get a ride. My mom can drop us off and pick us up. On the walk home, Christy has an answer for every one of my can'ts. She'll even loan me clothes and do my hair. Ask him, she says. By the time she's heading up her driveway, Christy has cornered me into a stuttered, mm, I'll think about it. In my room, I peel off my damp bathing suit and put on the first clothes that I pull out from my bureau, an old t-shirt and shorts that don't match. I comb wet snarls from my hair and watch Christy's minivan backing out of the driveway. Did Christy call me because she can't go to the dance with Ryan unless I go too? The minivan disappears from the view. I turn to my bulletin board and the postcard from Disneyland tacked on top. I wish it wasn't so expensive to call California. I want to tell Melissa everything and hear her say, it's okay, Catherine but it'd be too long to explain and maybe she'd be mad that I cared so much about Christy being my friend. In my sketchbook, I try to draw my ankles distorted by the pond water, but they don't look um, warped and interesting. They look broken. I write my words in the white space behind the sketch, but after pond and icy, the only ones that'll come up are guilty, complicated, hidden, and weak. I close my sketchbook. And that is the end of chapter 14.